One has a 1440 by 720 display, a surprisingly sensible camera, a user-swappable battery in 2021, and an about 200 US dollar price tag. If you guessed a full blooded Linux computer, you'd be right. Hi, I'm Linear, and this is my unboxing and first impressions of Pine 64's PinePhone Plasma Convergence Edition. First things first, I'm a part of the KDE community and have been involved with this whole thing for a while. I should also mention that I bought this phone just like everybody else because it's something which makes me excited. The first thing that strikes me is the sleek design of the box. I also notice the thickness of it, which to many out there will tell you that no, there will be no charger in this box. This incidentally is nothing new. Pine64 has never shipped chargers in their boxes, so if anybody's jumping on bandwagons here, it's not the Pine folks. The box design was made by members of the community, and yeah, I like it. Pretty good stuff. Not over the top, but still easy to identify. You could easily spot this thing from across a shop floor. On top inside is a little welcome card describing how and by who this was made and that you should update as soon as it asks you to. The little fold out thing under that gives you some basic operating instructions as well as tech specs which tell us that there's an all winner A64 SOC with 3 gigs of RAM in this, 32 gigs of storage and an SD slot as well as GPS and so on. Under the tray is our dock which has Ethernet, HDMI out, two USB Type-A, a, a Type-C for power and the tail to connect it to the phone. Under the phone is our A to C USB cable, a nice long sturdy feeling one that I don't worry will snap the moment I try and pull it out of the port. On the phone itself the right side's got a volume rock and power button, headphone sockets at the top and a Type-C port at the bottom for power, data and display port. Inserting the SIM doesn't require a tool because the back comes off and the battery out making my life much simpler. I did need the included converter as I had a nano SIM so that was very handy. On the back are six dip switches that Pine calls the privacy switches. Flick those to electrically disconnect modem, GPS, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, microphone, each camera and change the headphone socket mode between headphone and UART. Yep, this thing is hackable by design. The first time you turn on the phone it reboots once and then you are presented with the beautifully simple lock screen. Swipe up, tap in the default lock code and you're in. Time to have a little play. There are two cameras in the phone. The front camera isn't amazing, but it's serviceable. It does give the image a bit of a funny tint, but I'm told this is a software issue. The back camera is considerably better and takes some really quite surprisingly decent pictures. This ball is a very bright orange, and while the preview looks kind of weak, once the photo is taken, the result is fairly true to life. Remember, this is not a flagship spec phone, and actual freedom does come with a little cost. But all in all, I'm impressed. Right, time for a bit of playing around. First, Plasma has always been about the clock, so let's add one of those. Home screen widgets are added with a long press and a couple of taps, and can be resized and moved around till your heart's content. Apps are accessed by swiping up the home screen, which is really just a long page, and then tap to watch. Here's one I downloaded earlier, my own baby, the comic book reader Bruise. This version's a little old, but it still supports all the fancy frame-based navigation you expect from mobile comic books, as you can see here in Pepper and Carrot, Volume 1. Of course I wanted to show off Peruse here and share David Ravoy's beautiful and creative Commons licensed work, but notice also the smoothness of the animations. This is a bit of a theme here. Remember how I said in the intro that this is a full-blooded Linux computer? Well, here, let me just launch a few apps. This one's Spacebar, the texting app. It uses Kirigami, KDE's convergence-focused UI framework, so navigation's all swipey like this. Now, let's see the task switcher. There, one app running. Let's get some more. Here, settings using the same control modules as on Plasma Desktop. This is Nota, a simple text editor. Now, there's three of them. This one is Angelfish, a touch-optimized web browser. As you can see, also super smooth. But this is a simple page. How about something heavier like YouTube.com? As you can see, loading up YouTube for the first time, cookie warnings and everything, it's pretty swift. Videos take the usual time to load, but once they're going, they play just fine. But wait, why don't we do a trick? Oh, just turning up the volume a bit first, but now what about multitasking? Yep, that works. Pops right up there in the list. Animated thumbnail and everything. It also keeps playing in the background, which turns out is not something that can be said everywhere. But a full-blooded Linux computer without a keyboard? What's this? Well, apart from the fact that it works just fine, here's the thing. That word convergence hints at something very neat. How about you bring a tiny pile of stuff to a cafe and set yourself up for some real work? My screen here is broken, but I'm told it otherwise works just fine. So that's the PinePhone Plasma Convergence Edition. Understated and genuinely beautiful, surprisingly performant, inexpensive and with more promise than you can fold a screen at. The next round of orders will be on pine64.org soon and you can also go there and to kd.org to learn more and take part in both communities. I've been Lanier. Thanks for joining me.